completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 41, assembling the valve gear and checking the alignment and clearances. But before that, just look at this mess. I'm in the outer part of the workshop and I'm applying some polishing soap to my polishing spindle and now I'm turning it off. You may be wondering where all this mess has come from. Look at it, it's even on my jacket, it's in my hair, it's everywhere. It came from a couple of polishing spindle wheels that I bought and wished I hadn't done. They were recommended by a viewer. The first one that I fitted to the polisher was the coarse one. All this did was fragment and cover me in bits of string. Just look at the positioning of the fastenings in the leather parts. Diabolical, on all of them. And to make matters worse, the seller advertised these as having been made in England, so whoever made them, you should be ashamed of yourself. All's well that ends well, though, on the invoice there was a phone number. I called this number, spoke to the seller, and I was immediately issued a refund, and I was told not to send them back. So from the bench, they went straight into the bin. Time to get on with today's fiddly job. In this episode, I need to check that nothing fouls once it's all bolted together. So obviously, to do that, I have to bolt the parts together. I'm using Stuart 7BA studs. I'm fitting one of these studs at the moment. What I propose to do is lock tight a nut permanently on one end of each stud. And when fitted, the stud will be the other way around, with the single nut on the inside because the longer part of the thread on the stud sticking out looks like it's going to catch the standards. On this longer thread, I'm going to fit two lock nuts, but they'll be on the outside. These studs, purely by chance, are a perfect length for the job. I need to fit six of these studs in total. I didn't actually fix the nut on the first stud. And now it's time to use some Loctite 603 to lock the 7BA nuts on one side of each stud. This clip shows me pouring some Loctite 603 onto the bench. Have I gone mad? No. By doing this, I can just dip the end of the stud in the pool of Loctite and fit the nut. And I fit the nut like this. I use the drill chuck off my Myford lathe. I insert the stud into the chuck and tighten the jaws. Then I use a nut spinner to put the nut on the end. And once the Loctite has cured, I don't think the nut's going to come off. This is the other end, the outer end. First of all, I fit one nut, and I'm tightening it sufficiently just to hold the part in place. I don't want it to be a tight fit. As I tighten the lock nut, I make sure that the whole assembly isn't too tight. It needs to move quite freely. These parts don't want to be a rattle fit. This one is a little bit on the firm side, but by the time I apply some oil, which I'm about to do, here it comes. This is my general purpose lubricating oil, and by the time this has found its way into the joint, it should be fine. Also, once the engine's been run for a while, everything will bed in and get a lot looser. Once I fitted the parts to the high and intermediate valve gear, I rotated the engine, and it feels very smooth and very firm, which is just what you need. And if you wish, you can insert your own girlfriend joke at this point. Everything is feeling silky smooth, so that's a good thing. The only problem was, when I rotated the reversing screw, the top of the expansion link was colliding with the fork in the valve. So here I've rotated the reversing screw to the other end. And in this clip I'm using a small square needle file to file the inner edge of the valve fork just to give it a little bit more clearance. The real problem is that the reversing screw is pushing the expansion link a little too far. It only needs to move far enough so that the valve fork is over the top of the eccentric rod. What I need to do is alter this nut arrangement on the end of the reversing screw so that it can't move the drop arm quite as far. I'll show that in the next episode. I need to tighten the eccentric sheaves at this end of the engine, but there's something wrong. I can't get the Allen key in. So luckily I can get the Allen key into the flywheel. I take it off and fit it to the other end. The Allen key I'm talking about is the one that goes into the bottom of the eccentric strap and into the eccentric sheave. But for some reason I cannot engage this Allen key with the Allen grub screw. So I remove the strap and I can see why. 
The eccentrics and sheaves spent some time in my tumbler, which is a very useful small polishing machine for polishing up parts. And some of the media, which is like ground up walnut shells or something, found its way, believe it or not, into the end of the Allen grub screw. Can you believe that? I used this small twist drill to try and remove it, but it was a bit big. It dug into the blockage though, and I managed to be able to remove the grub screw this way. Once I'd got the grub screw out, I had a close look at it, and yes, the grub screw itself is completely full of the media from the tumbler polisher. I used a 1.1mm diameter twist drill in my Proxon motor tool to actually drill it out, believe it or not, and now the Allen key fits perfectly once again. Here I'm fitting the grub screw back into the eccentric sheave, followed by reassembling the eccentric strap and then using the Allen key through the hole in the bottom of the strap that I drilled. And through this hole in the eccentric strap, I tightened the eccentric sheave onto the crankshaft using the grub screw. And once again, when I rotate the crankshaft with all three expansion links fitted, it's very smooth indeed. And unlike one of these triple expansion engines that I've been working on, this one is not sloppy. All the parts are good fits. The more I work on this type of engine, the less I am inclined to want to ever build one. If I did build one of these type of engines, I would not video the process. It's been quite difficult making this series. Even though overall these engines are quite large, the parts are very small. And a lot of the parts are in quite inaccessible places. It's going to be worth it in the end, because these engines really are very nice things. That's it for this episode. As always, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.